I've been getting a bunch of questions about this guitar over the past few months, so I figured I'd just answer them all here. Um, this is a 2007 Gibson Les Paul Classic Custom. It was part of a limited run series that they were doing back then called the Guitar of the Week, and I think this is around one of 400 made or something like that. But yeah, I always thought they looked really cool and I finally got my hands on one, so I'll walk you through it. It's basically a mashup of a bunch of different Gibson styles, but you've got the headstock of a 335 with the little flower pot inlay and binding all the way around, headstock, neck, and body. And the body binding is actually Les Paul custom style with the extra plies there, but it's only on the front, so the back still has that Les Paul standard feel to it, a little rounder on the, on the back. Uh, this actually has a chambered body on it, which I know some purists are really not into because it's less like vintage correct, but it never really bothered me. Uh, I actually think it gives it kind of more of a pronounced mid-range sometimes, but depends on the guitar. Yeah, it's pretty much stock. The only thing I've changed is I switched out the knobs to the top hat style. I'm just used to this. It's what I've got on a Les Paul Custom and been playing it for years. Um, stock pickups, they're the Gibson 57 Classic and 57 Classic Plus. Uh, they sound great to me, never felt the need to change them or anything. There are two other changes I made to this guitar that might be a bit blasphemous in the eyes of a collector or proper guitar dork, but luckily I'm not a collector, so I don't care that much. But uh, I, first, I noticed when I first got this guitar that it had really bad neck dive, and I hate guitars with neck dive. Um, if you're not familiar, that's when you're playing standing up, and if, you're, if you don't support the weight of the neck, the guitar will just dive down like that. So I know you can get used to it, I know loads of guitars have it, but I prefer that they, that they don't, and I noticed because I had this guitar sitting in a rack with a bunch of other Les Pauls, and the strap button position was off on this one compared to the others. It was further towards the outside bout, and I looked online and it looks like all of the classic customs were made like that. I'm not sure why, but it pissed me off, <laughs> so I ended up biting the bullet and uh, drilling a hole in this guitar which to move the strap button placement a little bit more inwards. And it worked about, it got it about 80% of the way there, but I still felt like I needed more weight on this side of the guitar to keep it a bit more upright. So I actually filled the back cavity with those wheel, like stick on wheel weights that, um, you know, you would use to balance a car wheel or motorcycle wheel like that. So I added about a pound of those weights inside the cavity, inside a little piece of fabric so that nothing rattles around or nothing shorts out. But that got it 100% of the way there. I know those are some weird changes to do to a guitar, but I don't know, I'm particular with this stuff and I like them to play a certain way, so that totally got it there. So cool little tips, I guess, if you're trying to balance out a guitar. And those are two things that you'd never really notice unless you told somebody about it, but I thought about filling the hole and fixing the paint and the clear coat and all that kind of stuff, but I personally don't care and I think I'm hanging on to this guitar, so it doesn't really bother me. Also, if there's a strap on the guitar, you'd never see it anyways, but yeah, just two little weird quirks with this guitar. Other than that, it's just a rock solid Les Paul. Nothing too fancy, but it's a little bit off the beaten path and not something you see every day, which I always like guitars like that. Um, but yeah, looks great, sounds great. So let's go here at Sounds and thanks for checking out the video. <laughs> Thank you.